Today, Pete McCordick and four other professionals have a chance to win $200,000 with a perfect game. Four weeks ago, who can forget McCordick's 300 game at the Los Angeles Open? A day he won $100,000. 1974, Jim Stefanich was the last time. All right, here it is. Right lane. season the professional bowlers tour today from peoria illinois we bring you the 150 thousand dollar true value open let's meet today's finalists appearing in his second tv final of the year and trying for his first title ron bell in our fourth position a five-time tv finalist in 1986 with two wins and five lifetime titles dave houston the winner of $100,000 from True Value this year with his 300 game at the Los Angeles Open, Pete McCordick. In the number two spot, first time ever on television from Freehold, New Jersey, Parker Bone III. And our tournament leader with a third place finish here last year and the 1986 average leader, lefty John Gant. That's our championship field today on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And these are the landmark lanes, just part of a tremendous recreation facility here on that city of Peoria, nestled on the Illinois River, about 150 miles southwest of Chicago, Illinois. I'm Chris Schenkel. Welcome to our True Value Open. We expect a lot of big things today, really. Can Pete McCordick do it again? I personally hope so. I'm sure True Value does too, because if one of the five can do it, as we indicated, It'd be $200,000 today. Well, today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the first step toward racing's Triple Crown with the Flamingo Stakes from Florida. It'll be joined by World Cup Ladies Gymnastics Competition from Beijing, China. And Wide World of Sports inaugurates its first award as it will continue for each week, the Athlete of the Week Award. Speaking of athletes, my colleague is certainly one. And here before a 1,000 people, I want you to hear a live crowd cheer. Here's Nelson Burton Jr. Hello, Bo. Peoria. It's an underrated city in my book. Well, it's underrated around the country, Chris, but it's a great, great town. It's one of my favorite towns on the professional board tour. It has everything, plus it's the halfway point in the 1987 PBA tour. Now, during the tour this year, we've seen a lot of things we expected. We've seen no domination on the tour. We've seen a lot of talented young men making their mark. We've seen an upgrade scoring envi uh, environment out here. Obviously, Pete McCorry's 300 was the highlight. But one thing has happened that we didn't expect, and that's the dilemma of the left-handers and the number one player. There has not been a left-hander in the winner's circle so far this year, and only one player has led the tournament and won it. Now, that's all going to change today. You watch. The top two players are left-handers, but the guy in the number one position, he has the style to become a winner from the number one position. That's the aggressive, okay. tough style Watch out for John Gant. Chris, I think he's going to break the ice and be our first winner, second winner from the number one position. We're ready. Okay, here we are. Ron Bell on the right from Akron, Ohio. Dave Houston from Milwaukee, Oregon, his opponent. Houston, uh, five-time champion. Ron Bell looking for his first run. It's his second appearance on television in the finals this year. Finished third in the United States Open. Picked up a check for $30,000. First shot, left lane. Beautiful. So, Ron Bell shows what he can do in his eighth television appearance. Here's a former United States Open champion. Great athlete, tremendous bowler. Houston on the right lane. Didn't come up, sliding by Bo. David Houston uh, with a just a very smooth arm swing, smooth profile. He's bowled well all week with a big hook ball. He says today he doesn't want to try it. You see the high arm swing, 
deep knee bend. He's trying to, what he says, fudge the ball or cut the hook down. That time he just cut it too far down. He's the one, two, four, seven, first frame. And you see the one remains standing in for our five-time champion, David Houston, bargain. Uh, he has an open frame, immediately trailed by 11 pins in the first match. The winner of this first will meet Pete McCordick. The championship pair, lanes 37 and 38 here at Landmark Lanes, a 50-lane bowling center. Three pounds, six ounce pins this week, the lightest allowable by the American Bowling Cops. Leaving a four pin on the left lane. A little trouble uh, finding his spot. David, just a pinch high on the left-hand lane, leaving the four pin, the championship pair, the characteristics, the left lane, number 37, all the players agree, hooks a little bit more than the right-hand lane, so we'll look for the players to be hitting higher in the pocket on the left and a little lighter in the pocket on lane 38, the right lane. Start opening the spare for Dave Houston, 6'2", 165 pounds. Here's Ron Bell, 5'11", 230. Here you see the 27,000 will go to the winner of the True Value Open, 14 for second, 85, 7,000. Loser of this first match we're watching right now will be given a check for 6,000. Hook it. Heard Ron, and he, um, well, I don't know. What happened on that shot, Bo? Chris, the right-hand lane, as you look at his profile, is a little bit tighter than the left-hand lane. And what happened, he just doesn't quite get enough lift on the ball. And so it just slides by. Watch the head pin just tipple, topple over to the left, leaving the two, four, and ten pins. Has to hit the two pin on the left and drive it over into the ten. The ball will take out the four. Too much of the two. So, like his opponent, Dave Houston, it's an open frame for Ron Bell. He trails by one. Ronnie Bell came out in the tour in the early 70s and spent three years out here and then regained his amateur status and almost won the U.S. Open in Greensboro in 1978. Decided to uh, pursue his PBA card again two years ago, so he has a total of five years as a PBA member and a hiatus of about ten years in between as an amateur. Definitely a much more mature player than in the 70s. Very relaxed. An imposing strike on the left lane. Struck there when he opened. Watch the ball. It only hits four pins. The one, three, five, and nine pins as it drives all ten pins in the pit. An ideal shot for David. For Bell, Houston up on the right. Third frame. not coming up and leaving the 210. Shot very similar to what Bell has is what we have is a 210. We see the same thing that Bell had. Uh, obviously the four pin falls down and what David has to do is what Ron Bell attempted to do is get the ball to the left of the two pin, slide it over into the 10. Michelle, his wife, expecting, and we asked David if he had a special incentive in his bowling this year. But we'll look at the shot at first. No doubt about it. Gets the ball left of the two pin, slides it over, knocks it into the ten. A great shot. He only trails by one pin after three frames. We have a good match to start out with. Looking at 32-year-old Ron Bell of Akron, Ohio, who leads by one pin, can increase it to 11, strike up in the third, waiting now and taking his time to shoot in the fourth frame our first match. His wife, Claudia, watching along with you. <laughs> Left a 10 pin. A demonstrative Ron Bell, he really wanted that one. He made the adjustment on the lane, as we've often said in the sport of bowling. You cannot beat the lane as you see 
a solid 10. Six pin, second pin on the right-hand side, just flying around the center of that 10 pin. Bell has made the adjustment. He moved two boards to the right on the approach to cut down the angle to the pocket. Unfortunately, he didn't get the break on the 10 pin. With a conversion here, he'd still lead by one. Sorry. And his cross lane shot, an error. Big error, missing the 10. We asked him about his new clause and the sponsor contract that he has. Well, that's true, Bo. Uh, uh, what happened was my sponsors gave, uh, gave me a weight contract uh, stating that if I averaged less or averaged more than what I weighed, then I would get a, a certain amount of money. So as it looks, uh, it looks like I'm going to have to average about 235 this year. Yeah, all right, 235-er. in Ohio and Houston leading by 11 can increase it by 10 more with a strike here in the fifth frame strike working Houston all over the place coming up high 3 6 10 big trouble on the right hand lane for all the players so far they have not been able to make the proper adjustment Bell came pretty close in the fourth frame but he missed the 10 pin here, David Houston hits light in the second frame, leaving the, in the third frame, leaving the 2-10. He converts it, makes the adjustment to the right. Now he's high, 3-6-10. He must split the difference. Ooh. Okay, now the answer to the question about the expectant parents. Well, my wife and uh, myself, uh, we are expecting our first child in early May, so hopefully I can send her home with a, a nice present here winning this week. And uh, it's going to be a little more responsibility, but uh, we're really excited about it, and hopefully I can win today. All right, Michelle Houston. David can throw enough of those today. She can go home in style. Ron Bell, a good all-around athlete. athlete. Both these players uh, parallel in their outside activities, Chris. Uh, both of them are excellent singers. We know that uh, David Houston sang in, in high school. Ron Bell, an excellent singer. And both good golfers. Bell, a three handicap. Houston, a six handicap. Here's Bell to cut the lead down to one. Good match. We just joined us. This is the Field on the Open. In Landmark Lanes, the winner of this game to meet Pete McCordick. And then a first time Parker Bone, the third, and then John Gant. Ron Bell doesn't get the solid 10. See the six pin go to the right hand part and knock the 10 right in the face. For the first time in the match, Bell can take the lead. We checked the speed of David Houston last time he was up. He was 18 miles an hour. We'll see what Ron Bell is on this shot. Working on a double. One time, baby. Got it. His wish granted. Leading by nine now. We'll be back after this. Part next. Looking at the two wives of the competitors and also on Wide World Today, the debut of the Wide World of Sports Athlete of the Week Award. All right. We said that we'd give you Bell's speed on the last shot. It was 17 miles an hour as he threw three strikes in a row. Now Houston trails by nine. Seventh frame can retake the lead. Seesaw battle. Always a tough game for the numbers five and four bowlers. The very first match of the afternoon. Dave Houston with a, just a beautiful arm swing on this shot. Takes that ball inside. Used to take it outside. That was his problem. Then drops the hips to the left. Arm follows the body, stays right close to that left ankle. Never a doubt as he retakes the lead. The man that today will pass the $500,000 mark on earnings. <laughs> Bringing three, just like his opponent, Ron Bell, who now is up and ready, all 230 pounds. Boy, the camera work shows it so beautifully. The ball on the left-hand lane, you see it go down about 
45 feet and make a sharp break into the pocket. The right hand lane, the ball kind of what the players say, hydroplanes into the pocket. Both players have made the adjustments and it's now a tight match. The scoreboard tells the story. Bell can cut the lead down to one with another strike. Hold it, hold it. And it did. Fun to hear them and then uh, to see them walk away with confidence after getting their wishes granted here. Four bagger for Bell. And this is going to go right down to that last frame. Re rack. One of three re racks that a player is allowed in, the champ in any of the championship matches. Three re racks, <coughs> excuse me, are allowed. And after that, and no more are allowed. So it's not a judgment call as in previous years. All right, ninth frame. Ron Bell trails by one, has four strikes in a row, can take the lead with another strike. Has never missed this lane. Four strikes in a row. One time. A 10 10 on left lane. Disappointment. No doubt about that, Chris. He is disappointed on this shot. Let's look at Bell's match as you see the solid 10. Boom, six pin does not get the 10. And once again, three pounds, six ounce pins this week instead of the three pound eights we've been using, but that should have no effect. He said concentrating on what's in front of him. Leads by two. Bell must convert the 10 pin. He missed it the last time. Reading at the line, Ron Bell of Akron. Home of the Professional Bowlers Association, Akron, Ohio. And of course, eight weeks from now, we'll be at the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Tournament number 16 on our series of telecasts. Houston knows the feeling of the 10 on the right lane. Both players in situations where they really needed a strike leave a solid 10. The 6, once again, we see zaps over the 10th, and we've seen that three times so far. Houston likes it, then disappointment. Tremendous competitive first match where the winner will meet the last man to bowl a 300 live on television, Pete McCordick. For the first seven weeks of the Professional Bowlers Tour 1987 version, no tie matches. Last week we had the first match go to just one pin. Tita Semez emerged a winner. This has a very good possibility for a tie as only one pin separates the players. And another 10 pin on the left lane. That sets up the situation where it'd be very simple to get a tie. Let's give David Houston the spare and a strike. He's 205. If Bell comes up and strikes spare, it would be another 205, initiating a two-frame sudden death roll-off. Let's see what happens. All right, Dave, carefully checking now with Harry Golden and uh, Frank Esposito, Kevin Shipley. Bud Fisher to make sure that he has the scoring situation correct. A 205 for Dave Houston of Milwaukee, Oregon. Here's the reaction. You just can't walk all 60 feet and place it in a better position than David Houston did in the clutch. Now he's finished with 205. He's done the best job he could. Solid 10, backs it up with a strike. The job in front of Ron Bell is he must strike on this ball to at least tie. Two strikes is a winner. Anything less, Houston wins the match. Right lane. Come on, baby. baby is the battle cry for Ron Bell. All right, never a doubt. He does the same thing that Houston did as he drives the five and eight straight back. He said, come on, baby. He knew it. Now, Ron Bell, strike is a winner. Spare, we have a tie match. If he happened open, Houston wins. A 
it's all up to Bell. Pressure, pressure. Ron Bell getting what he needed to defeat Dave Houston. As my teenage daughters say, he's taking his chill pills. He's cool. He just needs to stay behind the line. That's a victory in the Pro Bowler circuit, though. Bell will now throw the ball in the channel or go over the foul line. He's going on to meet Pete McCordick, who had that 300 game. So leaving the 10th end, but nevertheless shooting a 214 to defeat Dave Houston, who shot 205. Bell with eight strikes in victory. McCordick next. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by True Value Hardware Stores. True Value more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. By Firestone, America's home for car service with over 1,700 locations coast to coast. And by Alka-Seltzer Plus, cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. The Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. Up next, Pete McCordick. Prior to Pete's 300 performance four weeks ago, Jim Stefanich was the last to be perfect on TV. Well, but unquestionably, here's the biggest upcoming ball of the tournament, certainly for Jim Stefanich. The game is won, but this is 300 and a new Cougar automobile, all on a strike right here. And the first show of the year. This is it for $10,000. Ron Bell of Akron with eight strikes, ousted Dave Houston. He shot a 205, $6,000 for him. And now in this year, Pete McCordick, the man that will watch Ron Bell shoot first. Pete McCordick, Mr. Perfect fame, four weeks ago in Los Angeles. But, oh, um, I guess this man, with only two career 300 games, he's, he's nice and loose and... Very talented. I think that's a very important point, Chris. You're absolutely correct. Once the guy gets by those initial first few frames, he can do anything. Let's see what happens. No. <laughs> Avoided the split, but he left the 4-7. Ron Bell. Ron just pulls this ball to the left. As we said, the left lane in this championship here hooks quite a bit more. And you see he starts the ball just inside the second arrow. And most of his shots have been just outside the second arrow. On this lane in the first match, he struck four times and left a solid 10, so by no means has he lost where he should throw the ball. The grip of Ron Bell, fingertip as he crosses the lane, 4-7. Oh a little apprehension there in the voice of Ron Bell, right, at the line. Now, here he is from Houston, Texas, Pete McCordick, qualified third. You remember he shot the perfect 300 game to Wayne Webb's 249 and then lost to the eventual winner of the Los Angeles Open, Mots Carson, 234 to 206 for shot. Well, that was relief. Everybody expected him to, in his first shot, come up with a strike, and he did. No doubt about it, we saw him do this 12 times in Torrance, California, 300 game, and it has to be going through his mind. With all the hype so far this week, Chris, uh, he, he's probably thinking more of the game than the match. So let's see what happens in the early going. Well, he steered that one a little bit, and he left the 310. So all that pressure, at least this game, is off Pete McCarty. The profile that's got has gotten quite a bit of print around the country in the last month. Pete McCordick, pretty nice push away, slightly higher than shoulder arm swing. Good deep knee bend, high follow through. The best part of his game is his finish at the line. The 3-10 split, here he goes. 
need a little luck in life, Bo. What a terrific break, Chris. I can't remember the last time I've seen this. He, watch the three pin. It disappears into the pit, 29 inches back. The ball double kisses it, kisses it again. It's still in play. It's still in play. A pin can come back out on the lane, and it counts. Now, if the ball had come back out, it wouldn't have counted. So it's all going well for Pete McCormick. What like a break. A sneak punch in boxing. <laughs> Let's see how Bell reacts to that. The crowd seems uh, so much in Pete McCordick's favor. Bell needs to throw a few strikes to silence them. There's one of them. And of course, he came through with strikes at the end of the first match to defeat Dave Houston, 214 to 205. The winner of this game will then go against one of our two left-handers, a man who's never won from Freehold, New Jersey, Parker Bone III, and then another left-hander, our tournament leader, John Gant. Bell carefully wiping off all the oil or conditioner that has accumulated on the ball from the previous shot. Just takes a lot of time and preparation. Uh, obviously, he doesn't do anything too quickly when you look at uh, the extra weight he carries around. He's trying to save some energy. Boom! Big double. Open with a spare, remember, and then a double. Leading by 10. And there you see the 1987 average leaders. 217, that's a whole bunch. It's much higher. Last year, 214 did the trick. So we see that ups upgraded scoring environment as you watch Pete McCormick third frame. Well, coming up extremely high. And a, a wry smile this time on the face of the 33-year-old native of Houston. Most of the action comes off the left wall as the two pin. The third pin on the left part of your screen drives into the 4-7. McCordick has it all going for him. By the way, Chris, he's using the same ball they used on the left-hand lane in that perfect game. He used a ball on the left lane, a different ball on the right-hand lane in Torrance. He's using that exact same ball on both lanes today. Let's see how he does on the left. with the devil and our match is all even. We'll be back. Williams Jr. will fire away in the second leg of a possible million dollar bonus. The Miller Lite Championship on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour next Saturday. And we have a feeling Walter Ray Williams will be more than up to the challenge next week in Milwaukee. Very right, Chris. Uh, he has a good chance to win that one million dollars. Uh, the, the house that he won in, in Kendall Lanes in Florida is very similar to what we have at the Red Carpet Lanes in Milwaukee and once again at the Buckeye Lanes in Cleveland. All similar establishments. Walter Ray has a good chance. Now here's Ron Bell. Match is all even. Three in a row after an opening spare for Ron Bell. The moment leading by 10. You watch Ron Bell. Obviously gets the body weight a little too far forward. And it's over the top of the ball. Slips a little bit at the line. He does a little OS commentary on this baby, and it sets right in the pocket. He gets a great break, and you'll see a wry smile on his face. He likes it. Leads by 10 pins as he prepares to go for four strikes in a row, fifth frame. Come on, baby. Well, shaky eight pin. Once again, Bell doesn't get enough finish on this left-hand lane. Here's the ball. It's rotating well, but as it hits the one, three, and five pins, you see it deflect away from the eight pin. Didn't quite get enough power on it. Easy spare for Ron Bell. He'll maintain a nine-pin lead. Championship here, as we've said before, the right-hand lane is a little bit tighter. That's the kind of lane McCourty likes. He should hit this lane. It's a matter of hitting the left-hand lane. Earlier, we asked Pete McCourty how his life has changed since the 300 game. 
Well, it's done a couple of things. It's uh, given me a little bit of financial security. I can pay all my bills. It makes bowling on tour a little bit easier. Uh, I don't have to worry about so much about cashing every week or making the top 24. And it's relieved a lot of the pressure on even Friday nights making the top five. Last night I felt very relaxed. So hopefully it'll also help me uh, bowl a little bit better on TV today, too. an 11 pin lead watched by Susie and you as a result of a four bagger here in our second match Susie who works as a travel agent in the Houston area flies to a lot of the tournaments that Peter is involved in now let's see how Bell responds as we've seen the scoring jump as we expected in the early going Bell right now going at a 219 pace McCormick 229 let's see what happens that better hook so Ron Bell with the 2-5 on the right lane. Six frame. Won the first match if you just joined us over David Houston 214 to 205. Bell very diligent about and persistent about his pre-shot preparation does the exact same thing every time looks down at the ball just make sure it's on his hand <laughs> two five spare all right when in this game remember we'll meet a rookie left-hander parker bone the third and then a left-hander the tournament leader john gant there were a total of 28 left-handers that started in the field of 160, 10 made the final 24. This, of course, is Ron Bell's wife, Claudia. Very tense, Claudia. Flamingo Stakes. Ah, yes, the three-year-olds begin the long journey. And it was a long journey to Beijing, China for the World Cup. Hold it. Okay. 139 to the sixth with a strike up in the seventh. A very close match, our second one. First, this commercial. There's something. Wendy's presents hot and juicy hamburgers. If you've ever had a dry, chewy hamburger, you're gonna love Wendy's hot and juicy hamburgers. Wendy's new big classic, soft Kaiser roll. Juicy meat, juicy toppings, and lots of napkins. We're running behind our time schedule, slow bowling. Uh, Pete McCordick in the seventh frame left the seventh pin, covered it for a spare, leading now by 12 and shooting in the eighth frame. Just a little earlier here this afternoon in Peoria, Illinois, when Ed Langto, merchandising manager of True Value Hardware Stores, presented the $100,000, the honest to goodness, bonus check for his perfect game recorded four weeks ago in Torrance. First 300 on national television since 1974. This was a happy man, but Ed Langto was just as happy to present him for a wonderful effort. Ron Bell, eighth frame, can cut the lead down to two pins with a strike. Uh. Well, Ron Bell is sure hard to read. He keeps going, ah, I don't like it, strike. I don't like this, strike. Well, this was another ah, and all ten pins disappeared as he's cut the lead of Pete McCormick's down to just two pins through eight frames. And for the first time since the second frame, Ron Bell can take the lead in the match. He'll probably uh, utter this time, come on, baby. <laughs> They'll have to re-nickname these championship lanes. Ah on the right, and baby on the left. Here's Bell for a chance at the lead. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Ron Bell. Round man from Akron, Ohio. Once again, Bell, a great match game player that he is, puts the pressure on his opponent. Remember how he came from behind in the match against David Houston to barely sneak by with a 214 victory to 205. Now McCordy must answer the challenge of Bell's 
and put some pressure on him with another strike. Boy, these are pressure professionals. All members of the vast PBA. Mm. 3,000 members of the PBA, approximately 100 touring pros, Chris, as you said, and these players are in top shape. Bell, loose, well-practiced. Is possible 257. McCordick a possible 259. And obviously that perfect game in $100,000 has improved this man's cashing ratio on the professional bowlers tour. Leaving the two pin on the left lane. Well, One pin. Well, Chris, as he slides by there, he leaves, as you said, the two pin there. And what is so important is he knocks out the four and five pins to stay a left, uh, one pin ahead in the count. If the four and five stand up, he trails in the count. So it's a very possible extra, extra frame match again. And Pete now looking at the overhead uh, score monitors. Let's get a little tense. And watching, well, not really Ron Bell, but the two wives side by side, Claudia and Susie. If Pete McCordy can get nine or a strike, he'll force Bell to throw at least one strike. If he gets less than nine, we have a possible tie. Big 238 for Pete McCordick, who shot the 300 four weeks ago. He had eight strikes en route. It's so important to throw that last strike. 238, he has forced Ron Bell to strike to win the match. He needs a strike on this ball. He was so good in this match game situation in this first match against David Houston. He threw two strikes to win. Now he needs one. The seven goes, the four stands. Oh, McCordick wins it, Chris. And Pete McCordick survived. 238 will have the final score on Bell, but first, let's go away for this message for our Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week. Today, the last in a series of tips for the ladies. Today, it's on preparation. So let's join Nelson Burton, Jr., The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice. Its subtle masculine fragrance is the classic scent of the American male. In our final part of our mini-series for women, we're going to discuss preparation for your day at the bowling center. Now, when you come dressed for the bowling league, you should wear clothing that's kind of loose and not real tight so that your arm swing is not bound while you're swinging through the ball. Another thing that women should watch out for is the bowling ball. Every lane has oil or conditioner on that lane surface. The proprietor has to put it on there to protect the lane and to make the lane very scorable. The thing for you to do is to make sure you wipe off that conditioner every time before you make a shot to keep it off of your blouse. And the third thing that women have to watch for is care of their hands to keep from breaking their fingernails or chipping or whatever. Well, it's not just chipping and breaking, it's the nail polish too. You men don't have to worry about things like that, but if you could just take a piece of tape and trim the bottom off to make sure that the edges are round enough so that they would adhere to the finger, push it on and pull it down underneath your ends of your nail that are exposed. Therefore, it gives you a smooth surface on your nails and keeps them from chipping or breaking. Well, thank you, Susie. That was a great tip. And thank all of you for paying attention and enjoying the three-week mini-series we've had for women. Like Steve Alford meets Indiana as they take on Illinois. Then on ABC's Wide World of Sports, an endurance competition unlike any other. To me, this is the ultimate test. A 3,000-mile adventure, the race across America, all tomorrow on ABC Sports.
Pete McCormick one step closer to his first victory ever. 238 over Ron Bell's 234, leaving the 2-5 on the last shot. Okay, next week, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, hotbed of bowling. Miller Lite Championship on the Overland Park, Kansas, the King Louis Open on March 14th. 21st, another Miller Lite, part of the Triple Crown, North Olmsted, Ohio. On to the PBA National Championship in Toledo, 260,000 total first. Here we go. The man that is making his first television appearance on the left, Parker Bone III, Freehold, New Jersey. And here's the 300 man, Pete McCartick, who felt the pressure in the last match, survived it. Let's see what he does in his first shot, second match. Frame number one. Well, that $100,000 paycheck has really given him confidence that McCordick is just bowling so well. He's an actually improved bowler. Now, Parker Bone the third, a strong-looking young left-hander, bowled very well under pressure all week long. Let's see what he does in the championship round. Left the seven pin, this 23-year-old from Freehold, New Jersey got a good future on the tour as you see him step out with a four-step delivery draws that left shoulder slightly back good arm swing good knee bend look at how well he is down at the line and good upstroke with that left arm no wonder he's in the top five excellent shot started bowling when he was eight years of age his parents met at a bowling establishment so i guess it does go right from the beginning parker bone the third Mrs. Bone, his mom is here, and uh, his only sister, Cindy, alongside. There's Cindy, who bowls a little. He said uh, about a 120 average. Can smile beautifully, though. There goes the tension for Parker Bone. Now watch the break of the ball, the good rotation. Now watch the action of the ball drives to the one, two. Now watch it hit the five. Boom, hits the five, drives it over into the ten. That's why you need angle and speed to move the pins. A great professional shot. There's two. With as many frames for McCordick. There you see the leading money winner as a result of the 100,000 at the Los Angeles Open. Pete McCordick is bowling steady, staying with his game. Del Ballard picked up 100,000 at the U.S. Open. Pete Weber, who bowled in this tournament, did not play. Marshall Holman, Walter Ray Williams did not cash. But then again, there's Ron Bell in the top. George Branham III, round out the top ten. Third frame. Well, when it's going good, he can do no wrong. McCordick, an errant shot, misses to the left side of the head pin. Obviously, if you were a left-handed player, kind of an apprehensive look and says, well, when you got 100000 in the bank, good things happen. Has a 20-pin lead over this young man up here on the right-hand lane. And a good break for the left-hander. Giving him a spare and a double. Came back and made a little comment to his opponent McCordick. The action of the head pin. Parker Bone goes light. The head pin goes the sideboard, snaps out the three pin, and that's the difference between using three pounds, six ounce, the minimum weight allowed by the American Bowling Congress that we're using today, and the three pound, eight ounce pins we've seen most of the time this year. You get that extra little lucky break on the off hit. Now here's Bone to even the match. Beautifully done. All even now, we'll be back. Fire away in the second leg of a possible million dollar bonus. The Miller Lite Championship on ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour next Saturday. Today, waiting now to bowl in the fourth frame after a three bagger, Pete McCordick. Two 
210 for McCordick. McCordick, we've seen this split once before. Converted by getting the ball over to the left side of the two pin, sliding it over into the 10 pin. It can hit either the sideboard, come off, or drive directly into the 10. McCordick must convert this to stay within two pins of Parker Bone the third. McCordick after three in a row has an open frame, 86 through four, trailing now by 14 pins. Pete McCordick, who has never won a championship and neither has Parker Bone, John Gant has one victory under his belt, our tournament leader, but regardless of what happens today, Randy Lightfoot will be knocked out of the Firestone Tournament of Champions. We'll have a new man in the 52-man field. Leaving a 10 fan, the man that finished sixth here at the True Value Open just a year ago at Landmark Lanes. Finishing sixth this year was Hugh Miller, whom you saw on our telecast last week as the tournament leader. Pete McCordick, a lot of experience bowling against left-handers. He has a twin brother, Paul, who is an excellent professional bowler, who is left-handed. His brother had a second in the Houston, I believe it was in Denver Open a few years back. Mango Stakes, oh, those beautiful three-year-old thoroughbreds. And I'll give you some horses to watch, Chris. Watch Faster Than Sound, and the name I like, being from St. Louis, the McDonnell Douglas type, Phantom Jet. Hey. And Beijing, China, for the ladies' individual events, plus the Athlete of the Week award. Four in a row for Parker Bone. We asked how this tournament affected him. It's affected her quite greatly. Uh, Thursday night, I was leading the tournament. I think the whole night, I tossed and turned more times than there's lanes in a bowling alley. I've got about an hour, two hours worth of sleep at most. Friday, I come out and bowl, and I was just as nervous. And Friday night, it was quite tiring. As far as eating, <laughs> I probably ate 25% of what I could normally eat in a day, and I'm not one for really worried about losing weight. Taking a 34 pin lead here at Landmark Lanes in Peoria. Parker Bones has it all going for him as he hits a little bit high on the left hand lane. Three pin goes to the sideboard, chops out the 6 10. He has the pressure on Pete McCordy. 34 pin discrepancy after five frames. But we all know that McCordy can throw some strikes. second match. He eliminated Ron Bell shooting a 238 to Bell's 234. McCordy playing in a pretty much of a standard line on the right hand lane about the sixth board. Ball goes down about 35 feet, makes a slight move, drives the five out. Now coming up in the seventh he can cut the lead of Bones down to 24 with another strike. Big hit early in the match. Semi-final match, the winner will go into the final. We'll return after this. Professional. Parker right. Bowen. He left the 4-7 in the eighth frame as we bowled through. Covered it, marking with a spare, leading by 22. Eighth frame. Yeah. Another 4-7. Twice, Parker Bourne, Bone, when he had the match well in hand, could have put him McCordick away, has gone high, avoided the split, and he ended up with a relatively easy spare of the 4-7. This is the identical shot he had in the seventh frame when he had five strikes working, broke down the split, left the 4-7. If he converts this once again, he will have a 20-pin lead in the match. It's far from over. McCordick is up now with a double working shooting in the eighth frame and 20 pins separating these two semifinalists. Winner to meet tournament leader John Gant. 
McCormick just taking it one frame at a time. As carefully sets himself. Great concentration. Tremendous confidence. You can just see it in the way he walks to the line. Can cut the lead to 10 with another strike. Oh, yes. He is ready. So is Susie McCormick. Every match so far today has where a player has come down, as you see the Rooters there, Parker Bones, mother and sister, Susie McCordick on your right in the flower dress. Every match has been where somebody got out way out in front and then a charge was made near the end. McCordick trailing by 34 pins just three frames ago can even the match with another strike here in the ninth. and you can see why he is tough well confidence and great talent here under the pressure just throws a perfect shot Parker Bone freewheeling through the first six frames all of a sudden the match is all even coming up in the ninth frame Bone must strike to stay even once again a possibility of a tie A six pen in the right lane for the southpaw. A nice shot, Parker Bone, under the pressure as you see his profile from the back. Four step delivery, good push away. Credits a lot of that to one of the great Hall of Fame bowlers, Dave Davis, who said spent a lot of time with him and felt his confidence and that great arm swing. You see the six the six pin remains standing. Parker with the spare with trail by one going in the tenth. Our games have been sensational. 214 to 205, 238 to 234, and now this. Pete McCourty going at a 236 pace. Parker Bone a 235 pace. So 230 is seems like the pace to win. McCourty, when you're bowling as great as he has is and has in the last month, just think about your game. Don't worry about the next guy. Well, Parker Bone, uh, he just went up and threw it with the thoughts of a veteran. <laughs> the tournament leaders by rounds. 18 game qualifying, 24 game match play. Earl Anthony, who won here in 1981 and 1983, marrying a local girl, Susie, Shelley. He finished 14th here in 1987. Satisfaction on the part of Parker Bone. What a great shot, Bone, to take the lead. Sends the ball wide, snaps the head pit over the sideboard. He's now in a 240 pace. By no way can he shut out Pete McCordick. Peoria first settled by the French in 1680, along with the uh, already Peoria Indians who were here. Look at that performance. 245, eight strikes for the non-winner, Parker Bone. As Parker Bone finishes with all three in a 245 game, it sets up a situation for McCordick. Simply this, he must strike on the first ball. If he gets nine spare on the second ball, we have a tie. Two strikes, naturally, is a winner. Right lane. <laughs> Two non-winners that really want to get into that final match. If there's ever been a situation where we're going to have a tie, I think it's right here, Chris. You see McCordick slash out the five. He loves the shot. But this lane is tough to carry on consistently. I think he'll put the ball in the pocket. If he happens to get nine in a spare, we have a tie, a strikes, a winner, eight. He loses, and it'll be bone against Gant. going to be a tie, Chris. Oh, that's something. Watch this. He needs a spare, though. 
He cannot blow the 6-10. It looks so, so lonely down there on the right lane. Mm. Six pin, we would have our first tie of the year, 245 for each player. This initiates Parker Bone coming up first on the left-hand lane, would bowl what we call the ninth frame. Then McCordick would bowl a ninth and tenth frame. There it is, there's the tie. Okay. Imagine that, a tie at 245. 245. Mm. Now, once again, I'll set up the situation. Park, pretend this is the ninth frame for Parker Bone and the match is tied. He'll bowl one shot and sit down. McCordick will bowl the ninth and tenth frames. And then, if necessary, Bone will come up and finish the ninth and tenth frames. We'll keep doing this until we have a winner. His first ever television appearance, a 23-year-old from Freehold, New Jersey. Strike in our two-frame roll-off. Now McCordick. High hit the six. Same shot he threw there in the 11th frame when he could have closed out the match. He pulls the ball slightly left of his target, cuts right through the middle. The 1, 2, 3, drives the 5 straight back, avoids the 6, 7, 10 split. Good fortune leaves him with a simple spare. Once again, the 6 pin. left-hander John Gant for the title and the $27,000 first prize. But for these two, it's the victory that's the important thing. Our tiebreaker scoreboard, it's all even through the one frame, so it's just the ninth and tenth frames. If McCordick strikes, he'll go ahead and bowl the 11th and 12th, just like a regular game. Again, a high hit, leaving the 6-10. All right, for McCordick, if he converts the 6-10 spare, as we see almost the identical hit he's had the last three times, he's left some combination with the 6-pin. With a conversion here, the best McCordick would do would be 38. The spare and a strike would give him 38. It'll be all up to Parker Bone. Obviously, a strike would shut out McCordick, but a spare and whatever count that McCordick gets will determine the winner. The person that loses will pick up a check for 8500 <laughs> Leaving the one, two, four. <laughs> Tough break. There will be no second tie in this match. Parker Bone must get a mark. A mark and six pins, he will win the match. McCordick has finished with a 35. A strike on this ball. Bone wins the match. will go against John Gant. All right, that's a six pin on the right lane. Conversion here in a six count. Obviously, I say the match is well in hand for Bone. The six pin is a simple spare, especially for left-handed players. And a five count is almost unthinkable at this point. The young man that admired Earl Anthony, who finished 14th here, and Mark Roth, who finished 11th. and his sister. Look at that tension. And Parker Bone asked me to say while we have a time, he wants to say hi to his dad and his grandparents and also all his friends at Howell Bowling Lane. So they'll get a chance to do some howling if he can win this next game against John Gant and get a trip to the Firestone. Six pins, I'll bet he gets it easily.
enter the 50 Wrestling action Sunday at 12.30 on Channel 7. I'll see you next week right here on the UWF. Sellout crowd, that's nothing new. Nine to make the top 24. $1,000 was picked up for Steve Cook as he finished 53rd low cash. Hugh Miller, who led the Venice tournament last week. Dan Everill, another lefter. Tita Semez out there. Norm Duke. Mots Carlson, our Torrance winner. Mark Ross, steady as ever. Harold Sullins, three weeks in a row, all be the national champ. Earl Anthony coming out of retirement is going to bowl a few weeks. Ron Palumbi, a nice guy. Bobby Jackson, early leader. Another lefty, Rosenberg, up there. Scott Devers, he's down the line. Powerful Jeff Ballinger, tied with Joe Berardi for 19th and 20th. Tony Marissa, Chuck McGavaro, steady all year long, getting better. Robert Worrell and Rowdy Morrow round out the top 24. Chris, as we're ready for the championship match. And the two men seated to my right are scorer Palmer Fogren and Nelson Burton Jr. did not bowl this week, but they'll be back in the wars, and this should be a real battle. The young man that is yet to win John Gant, who has one title and four tries. Parker Bones' opponent, John Gant, was third here last year. A nine. Well, he had some good things happen to him in the Pete McCormick match. And once, as he starts off the championship match, he has something bad happen to him. An apparent good hit. Parker Bone drives all the pins straight over the nine pin. Obviously, it's a somewhat easy spear, but he expected a strike. If Parker wins this match, he'll definitely earn it. John Gant, one of the tough, tough players on the PBA Tour. And the race no time, 23-year-old Parker Bowen. John Gant is up. He's 6'2", 190 pounds, former baseball pitcher, married to a physician. They have one child, Evan. And this is his second appearance in the TV Finals this year. Profile of John Gant, as you said it, Chris, powerful, a powerful style. Wrist cup drives down through. We checked that with the radar gun, 20 miles an hour on that particular shot right out of the chute. That's the fastest we've had all year long. He's an aggressive player. This is the kind of player that can win from the number one position. Let's see if he can break the jinx. Two tournaments last year, summer and winter, only 10 tournament leaders did it. And I guess overall in the years, but only in the 40s percent, so well below half. You're right on with that number, Chris, and uh, it's attributable to a couple of things. Number one, uh, obviously the guy in front of him zeroed in. Number two, the experience of the players. Twenty-seven thousand to the winner, fourteen thousand to the runner-up. It's always a reunion here in Peoria with the folks from uh, True Value that on a special bus come down and celebrate their uh, championship with Ray Becker, the proprietor here. They have a good time. One of the great establishments on the Pro Tour has it all. Here's Parker Bone to even the match. Oh no! Coming up high, and he left the two-four. Parker Bone, who is about 17 miles an hour with his ball speed compared to the 20 miles an hour of John Gann. Not only is his ball speed reduced on the shot, but he pulls it right of his target. Avoids a very difficult spare, but ends up with a tough spare of the 2-4. Spare in the third for Parker Ed Langto, uh, our host and great sponsors of many of our events, including uh, Calgary Olympic Games coming up less than a year from now. Six pen. Powerful John Gant went to the University of Cincinnati, got his degree majored in education and was a great baseball player. He came on for the team as a walk-on 
ended up with a three-year scholarship. Talk about speed. He said he was clocked at 95 miles an hour as fastball as a pitcher. Former Rookie of the Year on the PBA Tour, 29 years old. Earlier we asked him how he and his wife combined their careers. Well, when we were in college, we both knew that uh, we had professional careers ahead of us. And uh, we have an understanding ever since then. And we just accept each other's time and, and uh, dedication to each career. And we do the best we can. This time, leaving a three-pin John Gant, whose wife, Dr. Beverly, is on duty back in the Cincinnati area. An emergency medicine research, Chris, at the Cincinnati University Hospital. Here's Gant. He'll maintain an eight pin lead with this conversion. All right, this is a championship match of the True Value Open. More in a moment. Parker Bone has just covered the seven pin in the fifth frame as we bowl through. Goes running behind our schedule with the tie game, previous game. He had a strike in the fourth frame. It's eight pins separating these two. The leader is up now, John Gant. Spare up, shooting in the fifth. The one, three, six. Have to go back and talk about why the tournament leaders haven't been winning, Chris. I think it's a couple of mm. things. Number one, I think the players today on the tour are so mature, and once they get locked in, such as Parker Bowen is doing right here, they don't lose it and they give it away in the championship match. Number two, I think the tournament leader just doesn't get enough practice on the championship pair. Good points, Nelson. Spare for Gant in the fifth frame. By the way, practice, the players can practice for one hour before we come on the air, but only a half hour on the championship pair. now. When five bowlers are out there bowling, obviously five bowlers into 30 minutes allows only about 12 minutes uh, per shot per man there. Dancing off the deck, the left lane. The 20 mile an hour power ball of what we call John the Buzzsaw Gant driving all 10 pins in a pit. Parker Bowen got a strike in the fourth and a solid seven in the fifth, which would have given him the lead. He still trails by five. And then four, six, seven, ten. Bowen slows the ball up, doesn't give it enough room. He has two options. He can go either for the four, seven, and six, ten. If it was me, I'd throw the ball over in this area, the 6-10 area, try to bounce one of these pins out and knock out the 4-7. In the championship match and in this situation, I'd throw it hard and go for it. Why did he go to the opposite side? Well, Chris, it really made a, not much difference, but he feels more comfortable. He had already shot a couple of spares on that left side. Remember, he left the 7-pin a couple of times. He was familiar with what the ball was going to do in the 4-7 zone. He had already left the 4-7 spare twice in his matches, so he was sure he could make those. It's an option shot, but right now he has no options. He must start throwing strikes. Trails by 21, seventh frame. Inverted the split, leaving the 10. Unusual hit. Actually, it looked perfect in the 1-2 pocket. The ball snapping so sharply. Cuts right through, and he almost left an 8-10 split, which is normally a weak hit for a right-hander. It's a power hit for a left-hander. Doesn't get any good break. Avoiding the split was not a good break. He should have had a strike. Has a spare to shoot at right here. Eighth frame, seventh frame. These two left-handers are bowling for 41,000 total here. Live from Peoria, Landmark Lanes. We'll be back. Now you can avoid... Any behind schedule, we did... Uh, Continue to bowl, try to get in our 90-minute time period. We had three strikes, seventh and eighth frames for Gant, eighth frame for Bone. Now the ninth. And Gant is pumped up, and so is Bone. Gant was so uh, pumped up that when he came back from the line, watch this. Here's to take a 41-pin lead. Buzzsaw, he sends it wide. 
just saws the pins out. Now watch his reaction as he falls back. Here he is. He trips over the ball return rack. He took it in a lighthearted manner, Chris, but he actually could have hurt himself. Right, almost in the life of Wayne or Goose. Peoria paper, right? You got it. The man who's married to a doctor can put a suture in the title match with a strike right here. Leaving the six pin. Has done what he's had to do so far. John Gant going at a 224 pace. That's considering spare strike the rest of the way. The best Parker Bone can do is 214. So Gant with a spare here, a mark in the 10th frame, would be only our second tournament leader to nail down a championship. Wide world of sports follows, of course, Flamingo Stakes, World Cup, for ladies individual events from China, and Wide World inaugurates an Athlete of the Week award. Two styles of bowlers on the tour. You have to bowl 42 games to get where, where Gant is. That's the long distance runner. But you also have to be a sprinter to win from number one. This man's sprinting right now. That's the title. All right. The winner is John Gant, 27,000, his second victory. And as a tournament leader, only the second this year. John Gant is the winner here in Peoria. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Miller High Life. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Quaker State Motor Oil. Quaker State people reaching for the best. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. the True Value Open. 223 for Gant. Parker Bone has another shot coming up, but it's Ed Langto presenting the trophy, the True Value trophy, and the $27,000 check. And for all of you, next ABC's Wide World of Sports, first step on the road to the Kentucky Derby begins with the Flamingo Stakes, all-star women's competition at the World Cup Gymnastics, and debut of ABC's Wide World of Sports Athlete of the Year Award. Coming up next, and our final score today, John Gant, the winner, 223, Parker Bone, the third, 190. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC Sports by United Airlines. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Lusty. Oh. Lucky. All I have is yours. Legendary. Meet the world's first ladies' man. To a gentleman, they are all ladies. Faye Dunaway and Richard Chamberlain as Casanova. Yes, tomorrow. Is rust destroying your car? Then visit Northland Collision. They're experts in auto body, paint, and rust repair. Northland Collision can save you money by repairing many damaged parts with metal sections designed for rust hole repair. They work on all foreign and American cars, including vans, Corvettes, and the restoration of antique cars. For quality work and written warranties, remember Northland Collision on Woodward and Ferndale won't take a back seat to anyone. We want a radio station that's not too hard, but not too soft. You say you like rock, huh? <laughs> that's too hard. I agree. Let's slow it down. <laughs> that's too soft. You're looking for WNIC. 100.3 WNIC, songs of your choice from Phil Collins, Pointer Sisters, Bruce Springsteen, and more on WNIC. That's it. That's just right. Detroit's nicest rock, 100.3 WNIC. Have you ever bought a used car from a new car dealer? Test drive the all-new durable folks. We're looking for a used car. Bird, used car. You're used today. I was used yesterday. No, I was. At Don Foss Used Cars, our $99 down payment and easy financing make buying an experienced car a good experience. So don't accept second-class treatment. Bob's used today. You're right. Bob's on vacation. Can you come back next week? Come to Don Foss Used Cars. The British Record Industry Awards, late night tonight on 7.
like the sound of distant thunder the hoofbeats are heard today. The three-year-olds of 1987 pounding down the long road to the roses, that rock-strewn path to the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown. That road starts today here in the magnificent setting of Hialeah Park in Florida, where the flamingos have flown and champion horses have raced since the Roaring Twenties. This is Jim McKay reporting live from Hialeah, and today you're going to see not one, but two races of significance as we look toward the Kentucky Derby on the first Saturday in May. Now later, it'll be the $450,000 Flamingo Stakes with a full field of 13 horses, one scratch. But at this moment, the horses are approaching the starting gate for the Key West Stakes. Now, this is a $35,000 secondary feature. However, the entrants are very impressive, particularly...